Hey guys, and welcome back to another KV tutorial. So a quick refresher on what we did last time is we pretty much set up this GUI using the KV language. Now I'm assuming some of you probably realize some of the issues we might run into now. So for example, uh, if I want to click this button or I want to type something in here and I want to get this information, how do we do this? We knew how to do it from Python code, but with KV language, there's no way for us to reference these variables, especially when we want to do something with them logically from our actual Python code. So that's what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do today. Uh, we're going to be doing that using something called object properties and then IDs for some of the widgets. You can think of it similar to IDs for like CSS classes um, or like spans and divs, like all that stuff. Okay, because you know you have class and ID. But anyways, uh, if you don't know that, don't worry. I'm going to be going through how to do it all right now. So in the KV language, and I just have the same file I had last time. Again, all this code will be up on techwithtim.net under the KV or KV tutorials. But what we need to do is we need to set up some variables. Now these variables are going to represent something called object properties. And we'll talk about what that is a bit later, but essentially it's a way for us to access um, our values from within the class. And you'll see how that works. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to say name colon name and email colon email. Because these are the two pieces of information that I likely want, right? And I'll be showing how we can actually bind this button to a function as well and all that. These are the names we want, right? We want this text input and we want this text input. So we're gonna declare what these are known as our global variables because well, they're inside the class. Um, so name is gonna to point to the ID name and email is gonna to point to the ID email. Now you can make these different. You can make this email three, it doesn't matter. For simplicity, I'm gonna make these two names the same, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set some IDs for my text inputs. So for this text input, I'm going to say the ID is going to be equal to name. And I, again, see how we have name here. That's what you have to put. And then for this other text input, I'm going to say ID is email. Now just note, right? If I change this to email, like with a bunch of L's, this still stays as email because this is going to point to the ID. And then we're going to be able to access this from within our code. I know it's weird kind of how that works, but you guys will see that in a second. Okay. So that's all I have to do for right now in this KV file. I'm just setting IDs for my text inputs. So name and email, and these reference each other. So email is going to reference email name is going to reference name and you'll see how that works here. So what I need to actually do is I need to import something. Of course, you got always got to import stuff. Essentially, essentially we're going to say from KV dot properties. I believe it's a capital P uh, properties. Maybe uh, one second, guys, I'll have a look here. Okay, so I believe it's from kibby.properties. We're gonna import object property. I don't know why that wasn't coming out for me. It always glitches out when, I don't know. For any risk, okay, we're gonna do that. From kibby.properties, import object property. And what we're gonna do in our class now, and I'll explain how all this works, but essentially we're gonna say name equals object property. And then in here, uh, we're just gonna put none. And we're just gonna set this up as blank for right now because when we initially create this class, so when we build it, there will be no actual object property until it reads the KV file and looks at that. So we have to initialize it as none to start and then it will be given uh, a value after. So we'll say email equals uh, object property none. Now note, right, this name and this email need to be the same as what these are. So name and email, because those are gonna sync up uh, and find each other, right? So that's how we're gonna do that. So for Python, uh, for our Python code, these are the same. For our IDs, these are the same, okay? Uh, I hope that makes sense to everyone. Okay, so we have our object properties now. So this should actually be, let's just test it and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So get rid of this pass now uh, and see if we're running into any errors or not. No, okay, so everything's working fine. So now what do we have to do? So I wanna now bind this button, right? Uh, that we have here so that when we click it, we get the same thing as we got last time and it prints out the text input uh, for our email and our name, right? So how can we do that? Well, if we remember the property for button to get uh, like what happens when you press it was on underscore press, okay? So on press is gonna have to link to something. Now, what is that? Well, we need to create a method inside of our grid class here that is gonna be that on press method, what we need to call. So let's do that. We'll say define, uh, I'll just call it BTN for button, okay? And remember, we need to give one parameter here, which is instance. So it takes self and instance, and we need this instance parameter, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, actually, we might not need that. We might not need this instance. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna leave it out for right now because I'm just thinking about something. 
anyways okay so what we're going to do in here now is we want to get the name we want to get the text for this and we want to print that to the screen well, this is actually very straightforward it's exactly what we did last time so let's say name and then i guess we don't need that we can do comma and then name dot text right and then what we can do is we can say email and then we can say email.txt or dot text like that. Now I know these are not popping up. It's because I just need to add this self here because we're referencing the variables for the class. Uh, but these are going to be class variables, which are going to store name and email. So we can reference them in here by just doing self.name.txt and then self.email.txt. And let's actually go back now to our KV file. And what we're going to change here now is we're going to say ETN like this. Now the thing is, we can't just do this because if we do that, what it's actually going to happen is we're going to look in this entire uh, like file for a function that's called btn, not a method. So what we need to do if that happens, if we want to look inside of here for the method, is we actually have to say root.btn. Now the reason this works is because if you look, right, the root widget is my grid. So if we're referencing root, then we can reference all of the methods and all the attributes that are within that. So let's try this and see if it works. Okay, so if I click this, you can see it says name, email, and obviously they're blank. So I say, hello, uh, let's just do tim at gmail.com, submit. And you can see now we're getting hello and email tim at gmail.com. And that is working just like we had planned for it to work before, right? So now obviously if I wanted to clear those, um, very straightforward, we can do the same thing we did before, self.name dot tx dot text i always do txt equals blank right i uh, don't know why that happened and then we'll say self dot email dot dot text equals blank okay and let's run this and just make sure everything's working here so i just type hello and then i click submit you can see that it's clearing it now obviously right that's because we linked up this name and this email to be an object property when we read this kv file uh, we found name, we find, found email, we looked for the IDs in here, we linked all those up together. So now we can reference our uh, text input with those simple object properties of name and email. And that is essentially how you do that. Obviously, when we we're calling the button, what we did is we just use root.btn because we're referencing first this widget and then the method button. And yes, so remember I was saying you had to put instance in here. Uh, you don't actually have to do that. Uh, and that's you don't need to know why if we were to do something like this and we said def define button here then we would have to give it an instance because when we call uh what do you call it root dot button what's going to happen is we're going to pass an instance automatically into this this method that you don't actually see happening right if you know anything about object oriented programming so i just want to try this and no promises that this is going to work because i haven't tried this yet but i want to create a, a method here or sorry a function here and I want to try to call this function instead of this method. So if I wanted to do that, I would think you would just do this root. You just do BTN, right? And we'll see if this works. Uh, let's see name button is not defined. Yeah. So I think if I do something like app.btn, this might work, uh, but I could be wrong. My app object has no attribute button. Yeah. So, right. We can't actually do it with this function. I thought we were going to be able to do that, but I guess I'm incorrect. I assume we could probably put a uh, like define BTN in here. And then if we called app.btn, that would work. Um, but anyways, I've shown you guys now how you're supposed to actually do this with the method. So just follow with that method. I just want to test if the other one was going to work. Um, and yeah, so that's essentially been it for this tutorial. In the next tutorials, we're gonna get into some more advanced stuff. This is just showing you, because from now on, I'm gonna be writing everything in this KV file. So I want you guys to understand what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how we can link things up. And now we're ready to get into some more advanced things, do some more graphics stuff. We're gonna do some drawing. We'll maybe make a game. You know, I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen, but it will be good. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you again in the next one.